In this video, you are going to learn how you can use the new feature that Zapier has just launched, which is called Zapier Central. It's basically a ChatGPT-like layout, but the great thing is that it's completely for free at this point, and you can connect over 6,000 apps, connect different sources such as Google Sheets, and thirdly, you can also just start different automations directly from your conversations. If you want to know more, you can just go to this landing page, which is zapier.com central. But instead of reading, I thought that I would just show you in practice how this works. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so if you want to launch the Zapier Central, you just simply click on Try Central today. The page that you're going to be redirected is central.zapier.com. So you can just type that in your search bar if you immediately want to go and start using it. But you're going to land on this page, which looks like this. It's very similar layout to ChatGPT. But here, what Zapier is doing is that they are trying to bring everything into this ChatGPT-like conversation and create this working environment or working hub for anything that you need for your job. So those small things that you've seen on the thumbnail as well as on the landing page, they are kind of representing these small chatbots that you're trying to create to help you with your work. So in this case, you can see I have two different ones, but let's just click on the new bot and you can see a new chatbot was created for me. Here on the right side in the upper corner, if you click on the three dots, you have three different options. You can rename your bot, you can start from fresh, or you can just delete your bot. So I'm going to hit rename bot and I'm going to name this bot a lead helper. And then you can do two different things. You can create a behavior and you can add a data source. So let's start with the data source. If I click on that one, you can see we have at this time three different options. This is just a preview. So this is completely new. So the options are limited. So there are a lot of changes happening, but you can also click on let us know and you can let them know if you want to add more apps over here. Let's just go with Google Sheets at this time. And you can see that automatically it recognizes that I have a Google Sheet account connected to my Zapier. But here, if you don't have your account connected, you can click on this setting icon over here and then you can connect new connection, refresh connection, or manage connections. In this case, it's simply just putting your login information for your Google account. Now we are going to go and choose the source. In this example, I'm just going to go with this revenue spreadsheet over here. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to hit add data source. And as you can see here on the bottom, we have this icon over here where you can right now see your connection and your data source. You can see right now that the status is that it's syncing, but what you can do is to click on the three dots over here and then you can click on sync now. And after a few seconds, you're going to see that it has disappeared and right now you are good to go. It's continuously syncing the data that you have in your spreadsheet. So then whenever you use it, you get the most recent data. All right, so right now we are connected. So what you can actually do is to just ask any question about your spreadsheet. So I'm going to just type down, summarize the revenue trend. I'm going to press enter. You can see that firstly, we got the code block. So you can see the first action is that it's using SQL to select the data from the Google Sheets. And afterwards, it creates a new function in Python that is going to analyze the data for us. And just like that, after a few seconds, we got the results. Here's a summary of the trend observed. And then we got a quick analysis of our data directly inside the conversation. All right, so this is really helpful. And you can basically right now analyze your data sets very quickly with Zap central now remember you can also connect multiple sources at the same time that is the point of this feature so if i click on the icon on the bottom you can see that we can add multiple sources the second thing that i want to show you right now is the behaviors because this is where you can build the automations directly using this conversation layout so you want to click on create behavior and the first thing is that you want to write down the instructions for your behavior or for your automation that this specific chatbot should perform and for this just to save time i'm going to go inside my database where i store all my ai automations and i'm going to copy the instructions for the zapier central which is a new one that i have just added to my database i'm going to place it directly over here you can pause the video and read through it i'm not going to read through it but you can see that i'm writing the prompts a little bit different maybe that you have seen before so if you're interested on how you can write effective prompts directly inside zapier when you're creating your ai automations then definitely go and check out the first link in the description down below where i show you the 3p framework that i put together that teaches you how you can leverage different parameters so you can stay organized and get better results with your automations overall we are just going to be summarizing our leads that are coming inside our hubspot whenever we get a new contact and then afterwards the summary is performed we're going to send a notification to our slack channel now the second thing you have to choose is trigger so in this case you want to click on add trigger and here's where you can choose from over 6,000 apps you can see i can search for asana for example, 
and I can use that as my trigger directly inside this chatbot. But in this case, we wanna go with HubSpot, choose that one, and I'm going to choose the trigger called new contact. After that, you can see that all the fields are going to be pre-filled for you automatically, which is super nice. So if you have connected HubSpot to your Zapier account, you will automatically see it over here. And then you can also retrieve additional properties, which is the additional columns that you see in your HubSpot. But for this example, I think I'm good to go. So I'm just going to add this trigger. And then when you are done with your trigger, you are going to continue and add your action. So in this example, I'm going to search for Slack. I'm going to click on that one. We want to summarize the lead information and send it over to our Slack channel. So we can just go with send channel message. And once again, all the fields are going to be pre-filled for you. And you can see that I already have the connection. Make sure to connect your Slack account if you are trying to do the same automation here. Um, you can also specify the different channel that you wanna post this message in. But the main part or the main advantage of this whole Zapier Central it is automatically trying to guess the value using AI. But if you want to change this, you can change this to have AI select value from one of these choices, or you can set a specific value. So I'm going to set a specific value and I'm going to pick the channel and I'm going to say weekly reporting. If you scroll down, you can see that we also have a message text, which is basically the message that is going to be posted on Slack. This is pre-filled, have AI generate value for this field. That is exactly what we want. You can also show all options over here and in all the rest, which is the bot name, bot icon, and all the fields that you usually have in your Zapier automation, AI is actually going to try to guess the values for it. So this is where the AI is actually helping you. So I'm going to leave everything on have AI generate the value because I believe that that is the true value that Zapier is trying to create with this feature. And I'm going to just add the action. And just like that, we added the action. So right now we can test this. It's very similar to when you perform tests in your Zapier automations, but here you have this button over here that says test behavior. So I'm going to click on that one. And as you can see here, you get this right panel over here and it shows a thread of all the steps that Zapier and the AI is performing performing in the background. So if I click on the trigger, which is HubSpot new contact, you can see that it's performing a test. So this is just a test first name, test last name. If I click on the arrow over here, you can see that it came up with its own instructions for this action. And then it parsed the data for us and it created this final output over here in a JSON format. And afterwards we got the results here. So you can see that it successfully created a summary of our lead that we got in our HubSpot. But let's check if it was sent to our Slack channel as well. So if I go to my Slack, you can see we have weekly reporting over here and yeah, it worked. So you can see that AI guessed the values for us. So we have the icon over here. It chose a robot and then it also named the bot, which I'm surprised by the way. Uh, it named it HubSpot lead notifier and then it successfully summarized the lead for us and posted it on Slack. Now we are just going to close this thread and I'm going to show you a little bit more here. So as you can see here, you have this chat overview in the middle, but you also have this button over here, which says activity. So if you click on that one, you can see all the actions and all the triggers that were performed directly inside your chatbot. So here you can see we got the trigger. This time it created a test data set for us and then it automatically went step by step to perform the action, which was send Slack message. You can view details if you click on that one. Once again, it opens up the thread. Now, additionally, you can click on the reply over here and it's also going to show you the thread on the right panel just so it doesn't get cluttered inside your chat. Now, lastly, I'm going to show you that you can also perform different actions based on what you write inside your chatbot. So I'm going to click on create behavior. And so in this case, I'm just going to quickly type down an example. When I send a message, what's new? Send me the summary of the data set to my email. This is just an example to show you how this works, but you want to go and add a trigger. And then you have this option over here, which says when I message the bot. So this is new because you haven't seen this inside your Zapier automations, but right now you have this option that you can choose in your trigger. So I'm going to go with it. And then you can write down the specific keyword or phrase that you want to trigger this automation with. So I'm going to just type down what's new and then add the trigger. And then in the actions, I'm going to go and choose Gmail and I'm going to just send myself 
myself an email and I'm actually going to leave everything for the AI to guess, except that I wanna send it to myself. So I'm just going to specify the value. I'm going to just write down my email so we can test this whether it works and I'm going to add the action. Don't forget to turn this action on and then we are going to test this behavior. So it's right now performing all the steps for us to see whether the automation is going to work. The first one is the phrase what's new and it seems like it has finished. So the summary of the latest updates from the revenue data set has been successfully sent to your email. Let's just see whether it worked and yeah, it worked. So right now we have the email. If I click on that one, you can see that we right now have the summary of the data set sent to our email. So right now, because we turned this action on, it should work also when we just send the phrase. So I'm just going to send this phrase and see whether we get the same results. And it seems like it has triggered the action successfully. You can also click on this reply thread over here if you want to launch the side panel and you can just see how the steps are performed after each other. All right, and it seems like it worked, action complete. And yeah, it worked. We got another email over here. So if I click on that one, you can see that we got the summary once again again sent successfully. If you want to know more, you can just go to this landing page that I'm going to link down below. But if you want to know more and how this is going to evolve over time, then definitely subscribe down below. If you want to get immediately different examples, you can just scroll down and get to this section over here when you can just browse through different examples and then you can immediately try them. All right, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, I believe you're also going to enjoy this video that you can right now see on your screen. Thank you so much and have a great day.